Hello, I'm Justin Golub. I'm an associate professor of otolaryngology at Columbia University in New York, and I'm delighted to give you this talk about endoscopic ear anatomy. I'm honored to be here. I'm very thankful that Dr. Taufik invited me. Also, shout out to intern at Vanderbilt, Raul Sharma, who worked with me for a year in my research group. Um, I am just truly delighted to be at this course. I actually learned endoscopic ear surgery from this course. My first exposure to endoscopic ear surgery ever was as an attendant at this course in 2014. Here's my diploma dated April 11 to 12, 2014, back when uh, Alejo Rivas was the uh, course director. So really excited to be here. Um, this talk is divided into two parts. We'll start out with some background about endoscopic ear anatomy, and then we'll march through anatomy by uh, middle ear compartment. So without further ado, let us get started and talk about some background. So talks about anatomy are often dry, dry, much like watching paint dry, but I will try to make this as interesting as uh, can possibly be for a talk on anatomy. So all um, middle ear anatomic illustrations and photographs that I show you are going to be oriented like this. Just pretend Van Gogh is your patient and it is his right ear and superior will always be towards the left of your screen. Inferior will always be towards the right of your screen. Anterior will be in the front. Posterior will be in the back, okay, for all slides. Uh, just a brief overview of the view you get with the microscope versus the endoscope. I know this is going to be reinforced at other points during the day. Um, with the microscope, the view that you get is constricted by the width of the ear canal. The widest view you get is the narrowest point of the ear canal. So you get sort of a straw-like view of the middle ear. But it's particularly nice to learn anatomy um, looking through endoscopes because with an endoscope, the optical tip can bypass the narrowest point of the ear canal and you get this very broad, wide view of the middle ear and allows you to see structures in more detail and also with uh, a wider, um, a wider um, panoramic view so you can see structures in relationship to other structures. Uh, and here's an illustration of that. Here is an image of a tympanic membrane perforation with the microscope. Here's the perforation. And much of your view is simply the metal speculum. You can see some of the tympanic membrane. And now here is the same tympanic membrane perforation as viewed with the endoscope. And you could see the perforation uh, and you could see a lot more. So the white circle denotes the microscopic view overlaid over the endoscopic view. And with the endoscopic view, you could also see the annulus, you could see the ear canal, it's just a better view. Um, much of the middle ear anatomy is not in line of sight. So here's a transparent view of the middle ear and um, the black oval is basically the annulus. It's kind of the most you could see with the microscope if you completely remove the eardrum and, and didn't cure out any bone. Um, but with the endoscope, you could put angled optics in and you could peek around corners and you could see much more with some bone removal, you could see everything in the dotted line. With the microscope, you would have to do, I mean, substantial bone removal, basically a canal wall down and then some to see all of this. So let's march through anatomy by a compartment. Um, I like to divide the middle ear into five compartments as illustrated by this schematic of a circle with a surrounding square with a bunch of diagonals, okay? So the circle represents the annulus and the, basically the circle represents the itself, represents the tympanic membrane, okay? So what's directly deep to the tympanic membrane is the mesotympanum. If you were to resect the tympanic membrane, what you see right in front of you is the mesotympanum. And then around that, we can divide the middle ear into four compartments. So superiorly is the epitympanum, anteriorly is the protympanum, inferiorly is the hypotympanum, posteriorly is the retrotympanum. And we're now gonna march through those compartments starting with the mesotympanum. Um, so here's a schematic view of the middle ear if the entire bony structures were um, transparent. And the point of this slide is to illustrate that a lot of what you see is not directly in front of you. A lot of the ossicles are actually superiorly, in the, superiorly oriented in the epitympanum. The black here represents the annulus or the border of the mesotympanum or the perimeter of the eardrum. So we're going to be focusing on the mesotympanum, what is directly deep to the 
eardrum right now, which is only a minority of the ossicles. All right, so this is an actual surgical image from uh, Brandon Isaacson's excellent YouTube channel. And here he has lifted the eardrum forward, but it's still attached to the malleus, okay? So here are some key structures. Eardrum is flipped forward. We're looking under the eardrum. Pretend the eardrum is a door and we just open the door and now we're looking in the middle here. Here's the malleus. The, this is the handle or manubrium of the malleus. The inferior most point in the malleus is what we call the umbo. Um, and then the incus is directly posterior to that. I like to think of the malleus and the incus as sort of a number 11. They're two parallel lines. Uh, the incus attaches to the stapes. We could see the head of the stapes here. We don't really see anything else. And then coming out of the neck of the stapes is the stapedius tendon. Just below that, inferior to that, we see the um, promontory. What is the promontory? The promontory is basically the impression that the cochlea makes in the middle ear. The cochlea juts into the middle ear a little bit, and we see that as the promontory. Um, the bottom of the promontory has this funny cave-like structure, which is the round window niche or niche meaning basically cave. And inside this cave or niche is the membrane, which we don't see here because this overhang blocks it. If we move superiorly, we can see the chorda tympani nerve. Nerves are always these sort of linear structures with these funny striations on them, if you look closely. And the chorda tympani, it goes lateral to the incus and then medial to the malleus. The isthmus is an airway, uh, aeration pathway between the meso and epitympanum. And if it's the only aeration pathway and it gets blocked, then you could get retractions of the, um, of the epitympanum, the parsa flaccida. Uh, here's a little more detail zooming in on these stapes. So now we can actually start to see the horseshoe-like appearance of the stapes. The stapes, of course, has an anterior cruce and a posterior cruce. Here's the stapes foot plate. Here's the stapedius tendon attaching to the stapes neck. Uh, here's the incus and the malleus. Remember the incus and the malleus are two parallel lines like a number 11. We can see the tensor tympani inserting into the neck of the malleus, TT tensor tympani. And then here's the corda tympani nerve. Sometimes when you first raise the depenometal flap and you see an ossicle, you don't know whether it's, it's the incus or the malleus at first. And if the corda tympani nerve passes lateral to it, we know it's the incus. If it passes medial to it, it's the malleus. Um, in this dissection specimen, the tympanic membrane is basically ripped off of the malleus and some of the remnant of the tympanic membrane remains. Here's the facial nerve, this pink structure. This is the deep structure here that I'm outlining. Facial nerve, very thick, very pink. Uh, now let's remove the incus and curette a little. With the incus removed and with curetting, we could see the stapes in more detail. Here's the head of the stapes. We're looking like a bird flying on top of the stapes. So we don't see the crura very well, but here would be the anterior cruise. Here would be the posterior cruise. Attached to the neck of the stapes is the stapedius tendon, which inserts into the pyramidal eminence, which is pyramidal shaped, triangular shaped. Um, and then directly superior to the stapes is the facial nerve, which is very thick and obvious, this big pink thick structure directly superior to the stapes. And then even superior to that is the um, horizontal semicircular or lateral semicircular canal. And we'll see this in future slides, but the horizontal canal, facial nerve, and stapes form three parallel lines. Now let's march into the epitympanum. This is the space just superior to what we reviewed in past slides, the mesotympanum. Now we're looking up towards the epitympanum uh, for orientation here are a few music, mesotympanic structures we went over. Here's the stapes again, anterior cruise, posterior cruise. Here's the capitulum or head of the stapes. Here's the stapedial tendon. And um, more close to the viewer is the incus. And then like a number 11, here's one part and one part, malleus and incus. If we gaze superiorly, we could see the facial nerve. And now we can start to see some epitympanic structures, including even the lateral semicircular canal. So lateral canal, facial nerve, and stapes, three parallel structures. We can look anteriorly into the anterior epitopanic space and posteriorly into the posterior epitopanic space here. Um, if we do a little curetting of the sputum, uh, we can see a lot more into the epitympanum. Uh, here is the malleus. The eardrum is basically cut off. We just see a little remnant of the tympanic membrane here malleus and parallel to the malleus is the incus. Remember they form in number 11. Here's the corda tympani nerve, which as I mentioned, passes always lateral to the incus and medial to the malleus. And um, 
We can see the head and the neck of the Incus. The Incus, I always thought of looking like a big nose, the nose pointing posteriorly into the antrum. When you do a mastoidectomy, you see that um, the, um, you see the short process really is the short process of the Incus, which looks like a nose in, in my opinion. Um, here's the uh, pyramidal uh, eminence down here with the stapedius tendon coming off. Here's chorda tympanies, we said. Um, Prusak space is the space in the epitympanum that's located between the ossicles and the scutum. So if you remove the scutum, you could see right into Prusak space. And this is important because this is where cholesteatoma tends to start. Um, here again is our parallel two structures, the malleus and the incus. If we do more curetting, uh, we can see even more. Here are our three parallel structures, the horizontal semicircular canal, facial nerve, and stapes. We can even see into the mastoid and start to see the antrum and some mastoid air cells. The incus is gone here. The incus would normally be connected to the malleus and the stapes, okay? So it'd be like an L-shaped structure connecting these two points, but it's gone. And we could see the entire malleus head, neck, manubrium, umbo. If we look really posterior, we can truly see into the mastoid, which is really cool. Here's the horizontal semicircular canal, the facial nerve and the stapes, those three parallel structures. Here's the cochleariform process, which attaches to the tensor tympani, which then attaches to the malleus. We don't see the tensor tympani and the malleus because they've been removed. And then now we see into the mastoid antrum here. This is the antrum, which is the giant medial air cell that connects the mastoid to the middle ear. And of course, here's the stabies. So here are our three parallel structures, lateral canal, facial nerve, stabies. Let's go now to the retro tympanum, which is a little more complicated. Um, the keystone structure for identifying what is what in the retro tympanum is the round window overhang, okay? The round window niche is basically a cave carved into the inferior part of the promontory. And the cave is formed because there's an overhang, right? You don't have a cave unless you have like an overhang, a roof of the cave by definition. So here's the roof of the overhang. And then there are these three parallel ridges that are located posterior to the round window overhang. And here they are in order. The superior most one is the ponticulus. Then a little inferior to that is the subiculum. And inferior to that is the funiculus. Funiculus is kind of a newer term, basically espoused by endoscopic ear surgeons because we can actually see it. Uh, the subiculum is kind of an extension of the superior overhang and the funiculus is an extension sort of of the inferior part of the round window overhang. Now between these three ridges it, depicted in blue are our two spaces and the spaces are going to be in green here. Space number one is the sinus tympani. That is the space between the ponticulus and the subiculum. And the next space is the subtympanic sinus, which is located between the subiculum and the funiculus. And the subtympanic sinus is just directly posterior to the round window. Okay, now let's look in actual cadaveric or live specimens. So um, here's the promontory, which is this big bulging impression of the cochlea and carved in the inferior part of it is the round window niche and the overhang is the roof of that, okay? So here's a round window overhang. Superior to that is this little ridge of bone, the ponticulus, it'll be more obvious in the next slides, P, okay? Then there's another ridge just inferior to that, which is an extension of the superior part of the overhang. And then the extension of the inferior part of the overhang is the funiculus. Now between the ponticulus and the subiculum is the sinus tympani in green. Between the subiculum and the funiculus is the subtympanic sinus in a green circle here. The subtympanic sinus directly posterior to the round window. Now we're gonna go over this a few more times for repetition. Okay, here's the stapes, here's the promontory, here's the round window niche. Ponticulus is this ridge here. Subiculum is the superior part of the round window overhang, so here it is. And then the sinus tympani is between the ponticulus and the subiculum. And again, here's the round window overhang, here's the round window itself, here's the stapes bone. Ponticulus is this little spicule right here. Here's our round window overhang. So the superior part is going to lead to the subiculum. And then between these two is the sinus tympani. Okay. 
And then here's the round window niche directly posterior to that is the subtympanic sinus where my laser pointer is. Uh, now let's talk about the hypotympanum, the least exciting part. Not much in the hypotympanum. Uh, for orientation, let's just look at some mesotympanic structures, including our friend, the round window niche. Okay, here's the overhang. So the top's gonna be the subiculum, the bottom's gonna be the funiculus. Um, up here's the incus and the stapedius tendon. The um, funiculus, as I mentioned, is here. The hypotympanum is inferior to the funiculus. And the key structure in the hypotympanum is the jugular bulb, which is in blue. The jugular bulb is basically where the jugular vein goes a little superior before it goes inferior into the neck. And you can even see there's a bluish tinge to it. The other important thing to note in the hypotympanum are these air cells just anterior to the jugular bulb. Um, now let's talk about the protympanum. Protympanum is anteriorly located and there's not as much in the protympanum. Uh, the key thing is the eustachian tube, which is this black hole right here. Um, just inferior to the eustachian tube is the carotid artery, which you do not want to get into. And then the tensor tympani is located right here. They both kind of go into the eustachian tube orifice. All right, now let's do a few review images of the entire middle ear set of structures. So this is a mega view here. And let's just point out a few interesting things. So Recall uh, number 11 is the malleus and the incus. They form in number 11. They're parallel to each other. Here's the maneuvering of the malleus. The malleus, the inferior most point is the umbo. Um, here's the neck. Uh, here's the incus, which you only see a little bit of because most of it is in the epitympanum. There's not been curetting done here, so you don't really see the, the head or the um, short process of the incus. You do see the long process of the incus turn into the incus tapes joint. And then here's the head of the stapes. You can kind of just see, here's the stapedius tendon. You don't see any more of the stapes. You don't see the, the, the crura because of the way we're oriented. But directly superior to the stapes is our friend, the facial nerve. It's always just superior to the stapes. Superior to that is the horizontal canal, which maybe we see a hint of right here. The stapedius tendon comes out of the pyramidal eminence. This big, obvious, big impression is the promontory, which is where the cochlea juts into the middle ear. The cave-like structure in the inferior part is the round window niche. Um, and then um, inferior to that are some air cells. And then in the posterior part of the hypotympanum is the jugular bulb, which we don't really see. This is the funiculus, which comes out of the sinus, um, which comes out of the round window overhang inferior part. Here's the funiculus. So inferior to that is the hypotympanum. Um, this is the uh, eustachian tube orifice, this blackness, and then the carotid artery is often an inferior part of that. Um, one other thing to point out is the facial nerve looks like it turns into the tensor tympani muscle. It doesn't, they're different structures. This is the facial nerve. And then it stops and goes into the screen at the, at the first genu. The tensor tympani is a separate thing. It just visually looks like it's continuous with the facial nerve, it's not. Um, here's one more image with the incus and malleus removed. So uh, let's look at our three parallel friends the number one horizontal canal, number two facial nerve, number three stapes. Here's the stapes, head, stapedius. Here's the promontory with the round window niche here. Um, the overhang uh, superiorly becomes a subiculum and the overhang inferiorly becomes the funiculus. Um, here is the uh, carotid artery and the eustachian tube orifice. This black hole right here is very important. This is a hypotepanic air cell which if you're confused and doing a facial um, and doing a cochlear implant, rather, you might insert the electro here instead of here. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you're right near and inferior to the stapes and not lost in the hypotympan when you're inserting a cochlear implant electrode. And that is the end of my talk. I'd like to plug our similar Columbia course coming up in uh, just a month. Uh, it is also free and online. If you go to the website, columbiaendocourse.com, you can uh, see a review of some of the topics uh, discussed today. Uh, and again, it was an honor to be part of this course, and I hope you learned something today. Bye-bye.